423, complete and balance the following oxidation reduction reactions, which give the highest possible oxidation state for the oxidized atoms. And then we have letter D out of the bunch. So in this case, we have to react calcium metal, solid, right? So calcium being a solid, plus H2O, water, which is in a liquid form. And they give us a little hint. They say that the products have to be a strong base and a diatomic gas. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to rewrite this. So I'll rewrite it on the left-hand side just so that it's bigger. So we have calcium. Actually, let me start over here. We have calcium solid plus water being a liquid. Okay. Now, it seems as if this would be a specific type of reaction, right? It's going to be an oxidation reduction reaction because they told us that. However, just by knowing, you know, what's going on here, we can kind of guess, give it a good guess, right, as to what's going to happen. What happens when you have a lonely metal, or it could be a non-metal, but a lonely atom, and then a compound that has two different atoms in it. This is a single displacement reaction. So maybe I'll just put that up here. So I can spot this off as a single replacement or single displacement. Maybe I'll just put replacement reaction. What this reaction does, or you know, what, what it's going to do is calcium being all by itself. Calcium's a little jelly, right? Calcium is jealous because he sees that the atom hydrogen and oxygen are chilling together, right? And calcium wants to spoil the fun. Calcium wants to get in there and disrupt this compound. But when calcium tries to, you know, knock on the door and try to get in with hydrogen and oxygen, unfortunately, somebody has to get lost. That's the only way that calcium can move in. Now, the key here is that when we're looking at water, right, just know that water was not made up uh, by H plus and O2 minus, right? Technically, this works, right? Because if you crisscross down, I get two hydrogens for every one oxygen. However, remember, water is made by an acid-base reaction. So star this up, guys. If you need to separate water, just think of the components that it's made up of. It has to be made up of an acid and a base, right? The acid component, and I'll put that in red, the acid component is the H plus, and the base component was an OH minus. Two hydrogens, two hydrogens, one oxygen, one oxygen. So technically, H2O can always be written as HOH, and this is actually used or better used when you want to balance things. Okay, so this one was easy. We found out the ions in water, right? H2O, H plus, and OH minus. It's uh, hydronium and hydroxide. Now, calcium is going to want to swoop in here. So I'm just going to put calcium, right? But now the question is, who is it going to try to hook up with? Is it going to try to hook up with the H plus or is it going to try to hook up with the negative, right? Let's see. Calcium on the periodic table, and we should know these trends, right? When calcium is a compound, calcium, which is over here, wants to be a two plus charge. Right now, since it's by itself, remember that any atom by itself that does not have a charge in the upper right-hand corner is always a zero charge. But when it makes a compound, it's going to want to be that plus two. So if the calcium wants to be the positive, who is it going to kick out? It has to kick out the other positive because remember in a compound, you can't have two positives coming together and you can't have two negatives. You have to have one positive and one negative. So if calcium wants to be the positive, it's swooping in and it wants to only react with OH minus, kicking out the hydrogen. Ah. Now, I just want to backtrack here, right? It says, you know, 
we need to give the highest possible oxidation state for the oxidized atom. Remember, the one that is being oxidized is always the one that is losing electrons. It's always going to be uh, becoming, and we'll say becoming more positive. And that's what calcium is doing. Calcium is going from a zero charge to a plus two. This is the one that is being oxidized. I put OX, oxidized. And the plus two is the highest number in this case. So we're on the right track. So let's make the compound. Calcium is going to be a plus two now because it's going to be in that compound with the hydroxide, OH minus, and that's a minus one, right? Crisscross those subscripts to get the charges. I needed two hydroxides for every one calcium. So one of my compounds is Ca, but now I have two hydroxides. And if you ever have two polyatomics, they have to be in parentheses. So this would be CaOH2. And then what comes next? What was the lonely guy? Oh, hydrogen. Hydrogen is all by itself. Now, hold on. Let's see if I can group this a little bit tighter. I think I can grab it. Let's see. Perfect. Because then I can just put the rest here. So hydrogen's all by itself. However, you have to go back to its natural state. If you are saying just a atom, right? In this case, it was just hydrogen. You have to go back to its natural state. Now, can hydrogen exist by itself or is it going to be a diatomic? It's going to be a diatomic. You got to memorize your diatomics. And they kind of give you a hint here, right? A diatomic gas. So it has to be H2. And put the states now. H2 is a gas. So I'll put G, right? And sorry that I'm running into the periodic table, but I hope you guys can see. Maybe I should, you know, rewrite it up here, I guess, right? So maybe I'll just do that. CAS plus H2O, which is a liquid, yields CAOH2 plus H2, and that's a gas. Now, it checks out, right? They told me that I'm going to produce a strong base, and remember your six strong bases. CaOH2 is one of those. And if it's a strong base or a strong acid, it breaks down 100% of the time, meaning that it will be aqueous. All of your strong bases, all of your strong acids will always be in aqueous form. Now we made our compound, or actually, not our compound, we made our reaction, but now we got to balance it. Remember, every time that you make a, a reaction, you got to check for it to be balanced. So, let's see. The first thing that I notice is my hydrogens, right? I have two hydrogens here, total, on my reactant side, and I have two hydrogens plus two hydrogens, so that's a total of four hydrogens. So what would I have to put, and maybe if I can get rid of this, what would I have to put here to get to four hydrogens on my, uh, my product side? Four. Actually, just kidding. Two, right? Two times two is four. That would be four hydrogens on my reactant side. And then two hydrogens plus two hydrogens is four. So now my hydrogens check out. Let's see, I have one calcium on my reactant side, I got one calcium on my product side, so that checks out, and then I have two oxygens, two oxygens, so that checks out. Everything's balanced. We did it. So this would be your final answer, okay? And if I needed to do it, you know, on the bottom here, whatever, we'll just put a two here, but that's it. There you go. Guys, and, and this would be uh, aqueous, okay. Voila, we perfected it. Oh, yeah. So, guys, let me know what you think. Hopefully, this helps. And if it did, click the like button just to make sure that we're doing our job. That's how we, you know, know that we are doing our job for you guys and making chemistry and physics and math as easy as possible. So, if you are in those other classes, you know, if you have 
if you want, you know, more videos on math or physics, go check out our channel. Okay. At the moment we have math and physics as well. So that's pretty cool. I'll see you guys all in the next lesson and let's keep studying hard. Okay. Bye.